My name is Abby Dacre and I'm an illustrator from Cypress. I'm going to show you how Photoshop can be used to create a three-point perspective plan of a house. I've already set up my document so that the image space is indicated by the white area. The pink area is the, is the space outside of the page boundaries and I've placed three vanishing points in this area. The basic rule of perspective drawing is that the closer together the vanishing points are, the more exaggerated the perspective appears. So I've set my vanishing points quite wide and well outside the page boundaries because I want a nice realistic sense of perspective in my illustration. Points B and C are the two vanishing points which are set on the horizon. And these are the vanishing points used in two-point perspective. Point A is the vanishing point for our vertical lines which in aerial perspectives is set below the horizon and referred to as the nadir. I've already used the horizontal vanishing points along the horizon to draw a rectangle to indicate the base of our building. My next step is to use a line tool, which is set to fill and a width of about five pixels. And I'm gonna draw four lines from point A up through the corners of the rectangle. I'm going to zoom in to do this so that I can make my lines fit accurately with the corners of the rectangle. And these vertical lines are going to indicate the um, vertical um, walls of the building. The next step is to decide how tall I want the building to be. So I do this by marking my height on the front vertical line and from the point I want the top of the building to be, drawing a line back up to point C. I then go to point B and draw a line from here to meet the point at which the horizontal and vertical line crosses on the front wall. To complete the roof, I go to the point at which the vertical and horizontal lines meet and I draw a line from this point back up to the vanishing point. Now I've only drawn one three-dimensional shape so far and already the lines in the um, plan are starting to get quite cluttered so I'm going to start a new layer and I'm going to call it background. I'm going to choose a different colour for my line tool and I'm just going to draw over the edges of the building. Once I've done this, I'm going to hide the guide layer and I've already created two layer sets called guides and buildings. So I'm going to put the guide layer into the layer set. I don't recommend uh, deleting layers as you work because um, they could come in handy later, but if you hide them, 
and then it enables you to see the shape of the building more clearly. I'm going to start another new layer and call this guide 2. I'm going to go back to using the same colour I was using previously. And I'm going to create some guides to add some details to this building. Now the first thing I want to do is find the centre point of the top of the building. And to do this, it's quite simple. You draw two lines, one from each opposing corner. And as you can see, this point here, where the lines bisect, is the centre of the uh, top of the building. So to find the centre point of the front and the back edges, I just need to draw a line from point C through the central point. So I found the centre point of the front wall and the back wall of the house. To make the pitched roof, I'm going to draw two lines from point A up through the point at which this red line crosses the green line. So I'm going to zoom in a little and I need to pick a spot on the front vertical line to decide the height that I want the pitch roof to be. Once I've decided this point, once I've decided where I want this point to be, I just draw a line from here back up to vanishing point C. Scroll down again and to complete the pitch roof I draw two lines, one from each corner of the top of the house up to the point at which the horizontal and vertical lines meet. And then I'm going to repeat my earlier step. I'm going to choose a new colour, start a new layer, which I'm going to name background again. And I'm just going to draw over the pitch roof. And once again, I hide the guide layer and drag it into the guide set. I'll alternate between drawing guides and drawing background layers until I'm happy with the amount of detail in the image. Once I have enough detail and enough of the perspective drawn in, I'm going to make, I'll am going to merge all the layers into their sets, select the rectangular marquee tool and crop the image to the white boundaries. I'll then be able to use this uh, guide as <clears throat> having a nice detailed perspective guide will help me work more freely and will ensure that the perspective of my illustration um, looks more, much more convincing and there's a much more realistic sense of space within the illustration. So I'll start a new layer and work on top of my guide layer using this as a basis for my perspective. <clears throat> 